What's up, everybody? I am here today with the Arizona Cardinals Madden 19 Rebuild Series and the $60 man himself, Deontay Wallace, who is actually the $50 million man. I just got a little too excited during his interception, and when I watched that back, that was pretty fun. I, I enjoyed that call, even if it was incorrect in multiple ways. But Deontay Wallace helped us get a big victory last episode, and we're back today. What's on the agenda? We'll see. The Raiders are up next. That's an interesting matchup given they were the number one uh, picking team last year. And now all of a sudden they're in the playoff hunt. We don't normally watch back-to-back -back games, but I may make an exception if it's a fun matchup. They have Najee Trulock who's been in this series basically from the first draft class. Somewhere around there. Trulock is 31 years old now. He was their replacement, essentially, for Khalil Mack. And let's see what he's done throughout his career, then. We have nine and a half sacks, eight and a half, six. Solid numbers. And then, how do you all of a sudden have an 18 and a half sack season when you've never had, like, a double digit prior? Just one major breakout. I love it. Then there's DeMott Singleton, Avery Roberts. This is definitely a defensive football team. Remember Marty Sicko? He was with the Pittsburgh Steelers, the same draft we took Lester Phelps. Unfortunately, Phelps is no longer in the league here. His career ended way too early, I think. I was going to bring him back as a backup one day. But Sicko is now a Raider, and it doesn't look like they have the best supporting cast. Darion Jean-Pierre is their top receiver, it looks like. DeAndre Carter, Dixon Coleman at running back, and anybody at tight end that's good, Deion Hollowell. LaVon Richardson was their top selection this year. He's another really good pass rusher, so this looks to be one of the more intriguing defenses, but they don't seem to have an offense that can carry them or complement this offense or defense very well, but they have a good record. So I think that it'd be kind of fun to start the episode with this game and then do some simming afterwards. There are some really good offensive linemen in this class, and we could have a need there this coming off season. Now, there was a really interesting idea in the comment section I saw on episode 91, with the potential to trade Turner die. Now, that could be risky given he's our highest rated tackle and overall seems to matter quite a bit in the simulation, but he hasn't necessarily been as good as we'd like, especially in the games we've watched. There have been a lot of penalties, there were a couple sacks allowed last episode. The cap hits do get high after a while. I'm not sure if it's a good idea to trade him, but we do have some depth options that could fill in. It just might be really risky to trade him away at this stage. I think it's something I'd be more likely to consider in the off season potentially if we have to save some money. If there was someone that I had to cut or trade to, to save, I think Turner Die would be among my first options. But I'm probably not doing that today. Not sure I'll make any trades, but we're going to upgrade Deontay Wallace. I was actually wondering if Speed Rusher would be worth trying here because it might upgrade his speed but that would probably be really risky and if it doesn't work out then basically that skill point does nothing it's risky we're going for it i'm rolling the dice here i'm going for the gold on this one yes speed upgrade deontay wallace i just got so lucky on that i'm trying to give him a long amazing career we need all the speed we can get here it's also a good time to begin negotiating future contracts. Bradley Young and Jarvis Salisbury are the top priorities. I will begin with Salisbury, who is just 24 years old in his fourth year out of UNC. And what has he done? I can't check his stats from this menu. I should have known that by now. Let's make the baseline offer, though. Salisbury wants a little more money. Let's see what Bradley Young thinks of this $53 million offer. I'm definitely okay with it. And he will sign four more years of Bradley Young as our top wide receiver. Bradley Young was successfully named a captain here today. Should have already been a captain, probably. But here are the numbers throughout his career. He's a very dynamic player. 
doesn't always get the volume, but when he gets the ball, good things can happen. And I think he'll be our number one receiver now for a long time. And just as a preview to the top paid players a year from now, we have J Dubs cap number going up by 3.6, Bartons will go up, Turner Die, Howard Iwabima, Jason Lemon. I wish we knew like our cap room for next year. Obviously, I could just kind of calculate it, but a fair amount of players have numbers that at least go up a year from now. Well, I thought about trading Watts Toller because he's probably going to walk after this season, and not a single team has even medium interest in him. Yeah, I'm not just going to trade him for a 7th round pick or anything. If I can't even get a 4 from a team that wants a tackle, we're not making a deal. One thing that I just thought about is that signing players to these new contracts might affect their cap number this season. I'm not exactly sure, but let's check out Bradley Young's because I should be able to tell a rookie contract year four number from the first year of an extension. So one thing that might get tough is signing players in season. We don't have much cap space if that 2030 number goes up and it doesn't. So it's still 1.01. So my backup plan there was to save money this year on the cap number. I was probably going to release Patrick Mahomes and sign a cheaper backup quarterback, but that's probably not going to be necessary. So with that, we're set to meet the Oakland Raiders. How about the choice of uniforms today? We have the 1960s Cardinal uniforms and the Raiders are wearing their AFL Road Anniversary uniforms. So we've definitely never seen these. These look like practice uniforms, but we're gonna pull off the look today. Marty Sicko brings out the Raider offense and he will open in the air from the 25 yard line stepping up. I thought he was going to run. He thought twice about that and the check down net six yards and the Rams are now 0 and 7. What happened to LA? Now from the 31, Raiders have time for Sicko. Uh oh, nearly intercepted on the overthrow. San Francisco keeps winning. They're our top competition right now in this division. They are, I believe, 5-3 and three right now or something like that. Third down, wide open over the middle. That's a first down conversion. Raiders spread out the defense now just to run it once again. Right into Howard Iwabima. All right, defense. Got to make plays on third down. Here's Sicko with time. Check down and again. Underneath, we're just playing way too soft, giving up everything. On the ground, they'll run again. Oh, there's some room now. And the first down is picked up. There's an injury now to Frank McFadden. Corner is already one of our thinnest positions on the roster. This could be bad. I forget who our fourth corner is. But it's a 74 overall. McFadden, I believe, is a 75 or a 76. They'll run weak side on first down. Not escaping Burns. From our 33, Sicko going to the sideline. It's intercepted. A leaping play made by Starks. Craig Starks is in there now. Is he all of a sudden our third corner? Because that's quite the first impression, if so. Either way, we don't see Starks much, but how about that? Athletic leaping pick to give us the possession. And here's Arizona taking over for the first time. Jason Lemon will run left after an outstanding episode last time out. 147. That's pretty good for the games we watch. We don't normally see big rushing yardage standouts. And especially if there isn't like a 50 plus yard touchdown or something. Lemon's long was 28. Here's a quick strike coming from Unger. Good hands from Ono Bun. I think that's one of the things we'd miss the most losing Ono Bun. He makes a lot of tough catches in traffic. And I don't want to watch someone next year drop all those. Here goes Lemon once again. Going up the middle for about five. 
from the 46. Here's a quick one again. Cut on the outside by Kitchens. I think Ali Kitchens, whether he stays with the Cardinals or not, as Lemon's going to get past the 40-yard line and juke out a defender, I feel like Kitchens is going to be a mainstay in this franchise. Somewhere, he's going to be very good for a long time. Here's second down now. Not sure I like the formation choice, but it's my game plan, so I must. Here's a run, and Lemon doesn't get it. And now he's hurt! Uh-oh. This could change the entire season based on the severity. Checking his wrist, going into the locker room. Dislocated wrist is probably a six-week injury or something. I'm just guessing there. So Duran Samuda, the first-round pick, is in the game right now on a third and one here on the edge of field goal range. Unger gives it to the rookie. Samuda, I think he got it. Going back to Samuda, find some daylight, and that'll get us six yards. Marching down the field, here's a deep drop for Unger. They protect him nicely, and now stepping up and getting it away. Caught inside the 10, there's Onobun. That was one heck of a play for the offense. Now they're at the eight. Unger, end zone, got him for six. Hello, Bradley Young. The ink is still drawing on the four-year extension as he puts us on top. Very good start despite the injuries here for Arizona. And we'll see if Jason Lemon returns on our next possession. For now, the Raiders get a penalty on Iwabima. And they're running with Coleman, now a penalty on Sullivan. We don't got to help these guys out. They're 4-1-1 one one all on their own. Now a loss of two. Thrown away. And only 10 yards. So the Raiders settle. And now we'll see. Is it Samuda? Is it Lemon? It's Duran Samuda in the game right now. Which suggests this could be a serious injury for Jason Lemon. The Raiders have it at their own 40-yard line. Down by four. It's Marty Sicko. Given time, he fires and is intercepted, Deontay Wallace. He will be taken down in Raider territory, but it's his third INT, I believe, of the season for the $60 man. Let's get back to work. They're bringing down the free safety. First and 10, here's McAllister in motion. It'll be Samuda, most likely. And Samuda runs left, big hole up the middle. Come on, no flags. Here's Unger looking for a quick pass, and he connects again with Onobun. So far, the passing game has looked pretty good. Now Samuda cuts to the right and makes a good decision. Unger, what were you even going to do? Were you really going to throw a block on a safety? No, you were not. Third down and ten. We're going empty on this one. Unger, up the seam! Count it for six! It's Ali Kitchens! Second touchdown pass of the game for J-Dub. Love that play. Great first half going here for the Cardinals. We do not know the extent of the injuries yet. If you're new around here, I don't normally check injuries until the game is over creates a little suspense, makes it a bit more realistic, and also some of the information they give you in-game is inaccurate. I've seen last year, actually. It was uh, Shakir Cosby, out for the season, apparently, and then come to find out after the game, it was actually a six-week injury. Very different things there. So we have Frank McFadden, perhaps out. I didn't look. I should have, but we know Lemon has not returned yet. Bang, 55-yard field goal, 17-3 Cardinals. All right, look for 31 there in the slot. I forget Starks. I think he's 25, but the Raiders have it. And this throw goes outside. Excellent tackle by Cosby. Now, Cosby, he's also wanting to join the group of corners that just go for one-year deals after they reach their late 20s. So he's looking at about $7, 8000000 million next year. It could be doable for us. 
and we might not have a choice given our options in the draft. That was a sicko throw. Third down and 13, and a lot of tight ends on the field. They are playing it safe. Make the tackle, Burns. Call a timeout. This team knows what to do. Here's the punt with 30 and change. Not really 30 and change, but you know what I mean. It is Walters on the run back. Now up to the 45. We can make something happen here. 31 seconds remaining and two timeouts. Good protection and caught. Inside the 45, it's Onobun. Now down to 26 seconds. Unger to his right, and it's incomplete. Broken free from Kitchen's grasp. Still not in field goal range. I mean, we could try it, obviously. That's cut, though, and no need for a long field goal as we're inside the 30. But here, when you get down to about 12 seconds, the clock management becomes very questionable. We're not using our timeout yet. We're probably going to have this as a last play. We saw this last episode. Clock management here, not very good. So last play of the half. That's not a pass to the end zone. All right, 17-3, end of the first half. Samuda still in the game, so it does not look like Lemon is set to return today, but we're still playing well offensively. I think it's a big loss, though, if Lemon like is out for any significant time. We can't replicate what he brings to this offense. No way. Samuda gets a few yards and sets up a Schroeder field goal. And we'll simulate now some of this action for the Raiders. I'm not sure how much I want to watch in this second half. The Raiders got to make this a game first. It's a 17-point contest right now. And they just spent a whole lot of time getting no points. Ono Bun continues to have an impressive day doing a lot of the dirty work on the offense. And we are getting into Raider territory with Duran Samuda. Perfect. That takes us to the fourth quarter. Inside the 30, Samuda getting five, four to Kitchens, who's had a nice day. And it looks like we're here to build up this lead even further with Walker Onobon. Raiders getting down the field thanks to Darion Jean-Pierre with some good receptions. And they also get the two-point conversion. So a two-score game now. If the Raiders get this back, we'll watch. Two penalties on the possession now. 17 to Young. And now we're in scoring range to at least make it a three-score game. And we are able to do just that. Good game today. The Cardinals win yet again. And we're a step closer to the postseason. The Raiders were 4-1-1. One one. I didn't feel like their roster matched their record. And today, they regress a little bit as the Cardinals get a dominant win without a couple key players. We'll do some simming after this, but a great day for J.W. Unger. Nearly flawless, three touchdowns, 80% complete. Samuda came in and did an okay job in the absence of Jason Lemon. Obviously, Lemon's one of the top backs, so it's hard to duplicate what he does. But we still saw Samuda get close to 100 all-purpose. Kitchens had a six-catch day, and Onobon was very busy. On defense, two tackles for loss for Cosby, Vaughn, and Burns. No sacks, but we get picks for Wallace and Craig Starks. And it was a pretty impressive INT. Will we need Starks to play more going forward? First, we'll upgrade Anthony Brinker, who is still under contract next season. Watts Toller is not. So keep that in mind. Brinker will still be one of our backups for at least another season. And he goes up to a 78 overall with some pass block boost. All right, we have one new injury. Let's take a look here. And it's to Jason Lemon, who is only going to miss one game. The length there says three. It'll say two once I sim, but then we have the bye week. So Lemon's just going to miss one more game, and he'll be back to 100%. So that's pretty good. Weekly award was this for last episode? Sure was. We haven't taken a look at the concessions in a while, but we made over a million dollars last game thanks to our $12 barbecue, the $12 turkey leg. We're going to have a sale, a dollar off. I feel like $7 for nachos, that's a little too much. 
We're gonna bump that down to six dollars. The prickly pear cactus shake. That sounds dangerous. I'm dropping the price. We're making a lot of money on merch though. Whose merch is selling? This isn't the personalized stuff. Oh, the Pat Mahomes Cardinals jersey. I want to add that one to my collection. Good thing they're selling more than Ungers. What are the fans trying to tell me here? Isaiah Wynn's selling a lot of uniforms. Barton, 4700 That's the best-selling jersey we have. It's also our cheapest. All right, we're going to make the Mahomes jersey the same price as Unger and see what happens with this popularity contest here with quarterback. Memorabilia, the Mahomes football. Why is the backup quarterback always the one signing footballs? So we make like $7 million, it looks like, every home game. The player bonus here skews the numbers quite a bit. I don't give out a $17 million uh, check every week here in this series, so that's why it's so negative. All right, I have to get more aggressive here to try and re-sign Jarvis Salisbury. And I remember last year, how we'll stop negotiating after a while. I'm trying to avoid that again. I think four years, 41 million is a fair deal here. Salisbury will sign with the Arizona Cardinals. So we keep two of our cornerstone players for next year and beyond. Jason Lemon has already been cleared, but I want to give the bonus XP to Samuda. That'll help out his development, and I don't want to see Jason Lemon aggravate that injury at all. So in Week 10, we take on San Francisco. They have the same record as us. No, I want to watch this game. Yeah, the division has been a lot different this year, and I really want to watch that San Francisco game in the next episode. So maybe this one will be a smaller video, but I'll get that next episode out quicker then. But I think that it's not a bad place to stop, just given the way things are going here. There are certain teams I want to highlight. We'll do some more progress next episode. We'll do some upgrading, though. Frank McFadden is up first, and he is not hurt. But we saw Craig Starks come in and do pretty well. So if he had to play, I think he'd do fairly well. McFadden has a few picks this season, though, so keep that in mind. Here's a pretty key upgrade, Jamerson Williams. I really want him to develop into a starting offensive lineman for us. And let's see, what needs the work here? Finesse and power. Basically, the run blocking side of things needs a lot of work. But I'm going to go pass protector here on the first one because if he ever has to play, that's the top priority. And back up corner, Parker Mays. That's not much XP to upgrade as he gets a little faster. He does have quick dev, so that's pretty interesting stuff. I have been worried about how to replace the cornerbacks this year. Like, I think we keep Howell. We probably don't keep Shakir Cosby. There are some really good options, though, in this class. If you trust going mid-round for a starter, it's a little risky. But I feel like we have a lot of options. I just scouted... Farrell Wisham here, who has good tackle press in decent zone at six foot two, and there's options down here in the fourth and fifth round. Like maybe I can end up trusting one of these players instead of paying Cosby again. So we'll see San Francisco next time. Martinez, Ballard, Rodriguez, Knox, Kaysen Blair, Hunter Hogg, and Darius Butler. I'm not sure we're very familiar with him. The receiver that we know from this team is Trey Brackenridge, who's in his 11th season. He still has superstar development. How come he's not regressing? His skills have, but the development hasn't, oddly enough. Brackenridge has given us all kinds of headaches throughout this series. He almost scores a touchdown against us every time he takes the field. I've got to see his career numbers. These are pretty good. They might be like right on the fringe of being Hall of Fame because wide receiver is just a tough position to make it in. Yeah, Brackenridge is at least like a Ring of Honor caliber player here for a team. His entire career in San Francisco, almost 11,000 yards, 74 touchdowns. Why don't we see some of the other career stats here throughout our league and some of the players that have had long, impressive careers. Here we have Carson Wentz as the active leader in touchdown passes, 488. Jared Goff, meanwhile, the active leader in interceptions. Rosen is in third, 
for rushing, Saquon Barkley, 13,897. Now, a lot could have changed here in the series with players like Ezekiel Elliott, but this would be the sixth most all-time right here. I'll check out the records afterwards. And Everett McKay has 10,000, 80 touchdowns. Antonio Barnes has 100. I love seeing this stuff here. Jason Lemons just shy of 8,000 rushing yards. Charles Duff is the active leader in receptions. Brackenridge right behind him. And Brackenridge has a comfortable lead here when it comes to receiving yards. Jarek Payne, Jonathan Mitchell, Josh Gutierrez. I remember that draft, almost taking him 10 drafts ago. DeAndre House, Charles Duff. Ono Bunn has a pretty solid career going as well. I don't think the defense is going to be complete here. I think they still forget some players in the sack department, especially. Miles Garrett, 163 and a half. Joey Bosa over 150, Tack McKinley in triple digits as well, Daniil Hunter still in the league. There aren't a lot of players in our league now that were in here in year one. Hunter's one of them, Joey Bosa probably going to retire after this season I'd assume for those guys. Miles Jack 27 picks, Marcus Williams 25, Adoree Jackson. And now to the record books. Here are the passing yardage leaders all time in the series. Nobody that was drafted in this series has made it into the top 10 here for passing touchdowns. Tom Brady, 555. Carson Wentz is trying to get to the 500 club. Wow. Ezekiel Elliott not only passed Emmitt Smith, he destroyed his all-time rushing record. That's incredible. He broke that record as well for touchdowns, receiving yards, Jerry Rice, probably not losing that one anytime soon. And how about a few draft stories here? Brian Patrick, was he the really good safety that I scouted? The son of an Olympic track star. Okay, a fast safety. You have my attention. LSU quarterback Carter Herman won the Heisman Trophy today. Yep, Patrick is that safety I scouted who was really well-rounded, only 22, and now we already know he's going to have elite speed. Carter Herman, by the way, he must have been in the last draft class because he's not here. All right, so we'll take a look at the league leaders and then end this episode. Wow, Rosen's numbers are really good for a team that's like 1-7 or 2-7, whatever it is. Marion DuBose leads the NFL in rushing so far. Jason Lemon, despite missing some time, is very high on the list. In the air, Moses Henderson, 7-11. Tyree Gilbert, over 700 yards as well for touchdown. Spencer Turnbull's already at 9. Is he still Superstar Dev? He's Star. Not sure if he was ever Superstar. Probably. Those are really good ratings. Oh man, I was hoping that Frank McFadden would be in first for interceptions, but he's tied for second. All right, fun episode, everybody. Hope you had a good time today. Please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and next time we have a very big division battle against San Francisco. Have a great day, everybody, and I will see you again soon.